In this video, we'll learn how to load balance multiple server sent event backends to achieve scalability and high availability. So by the end of the video, you'll connect to a single endpoint, which is our load balancer. In this case, I'm going to use a JProxy. And every time you're going to connect, you're going to receive a response from a different server. So in this case, server three, another browser will receive server two, and then another browser will receive server one. And this is by design, as long with the moment you start connecting to one server sent event, you will always get a response for that session from that same server, because server sent event is stateful for that particular request for each request you make. The moment you close that event source, and then you open it again, you're going to get a brand new server. How about we jump into it and do this thing, guys? All right, guys, so here I have three backends that support server sent event. So the first backend is running on port 1111. And uh, as you can see, if I go to uh, more tools and try to use the event source thing here, and let's change this to 1111. This is the stream endpoint. You make a request, you create an event source object, and then you just listen on the messages that comes back. And the my server sent event uh, that I've been configured always return after, after each second, it just keeps sending the same message from that same server, right? So it's a very simple thing. If I refresh that, go to server two, the exact same thing, but I'm getting a response from server two this time, okay? So I have I have a lot of servers that I, I spin up a lot of servers that have server sent event. And guys, I talked about server sent event. If you want to see the code, how to do that, it's really simple. It's nothing than a glorified long polling that returns that returns essentially a transfer chunk encoding. That's it. You send one request and you keep getting responses infinitely until you give up and close the connection or close the request. That's what server sent events really. It's running on HTTP. That's why it's very simple. All right. Now we have the backends. We know our backends. And there's another backend 3333. Let's go back and uh, create a brand new config. I'm going to use HA proxy. You can use Nginx. You can use any proxy that can perform at a layer seven, right? So if, if you have a proxy that can understand, first of all, transfer chunk encoding, right? It has to because that's what server sent event returns back to you, right? In, in chunks, if you have a proxy, a reverse proxy, to be specific, that can understand how to deliver transfer chunks, because not all of them do, do right? and supports layer seven proxying, then you can do that. You can do the same thing with uh, layer four proxying. If, you're, if, if your proxy doesn't support layer seven transfer chunk control, you can do it with layer four proxying. However, that's a little bit expensive because that a, a new TCP connection, a brand TCP connection will be reserved just for you, which is a waste for each client, right? All right, how about we create an SSE.CFG? Let's create a front end right here. Let's go to SSE. Let's listen on port 8080. That's that will be my that will be the port that I'm gonna connect to, right? And uh, let's specify a client timeout here. And uh, this is the timeout. Like, how long do you wait for the client to be idle? Uh, literally just three seconds. I, I know my client will never be idle in this case, right? Because it's, it's gonna keep acknowledging all these server sent event that are we going to send right so it's not it's not going to be idle if it's idle more than three seconds that means the client is dead all right uh what else uh obviously i'm going to do the mode http that's the layer seven uh, proxying i talked about layer seven and layer four proxying check out the video here if you want to learn more understand the basic fundamentals guys and everything that comes on top of it becomes a piece of cake believe me i want to use the back end that's called sse which doesn't exist here all right, I'm going to create the backend called all SSE and let's create server one. Uh, this the server one is one, 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 one. Server two is uh, two, 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 two. Server three is three, three, three. By default, this is going to be a round robin. You can change that if you want to. But uh, still, the backend still also supported on layer seven mode HTTP, and uh, we're gonna tie. We're gonna specify the timeout server. Uh, let's do the timeout connect. Uh, how long should I wait uh, to connect to the backend? 
not long <laughs> you should if you can't connect in two seconds even less then then kill that connect these mean these servers are dead right this is the most important thing server <laughs> timeout server this should be as large as you can right <laughs> why because when you send a request what is ssa you send a single request and you get an infinite amount of essentially packets that resembles the response to, to so to your proxy it looks like their your server is taking a sweet ass time responding but it's actually responding it never finishes this response never finishes that's that's what sse is it's just one request with a with a flood of streams that comes back it does that never finish so if you set this low like 10 seconds you're gonna kill your server after 10 seconds because it's hey uh, we send a request to this backend and it uh, after 10 seconds still responding let's kill it no <laughs> you want this as large as possible that's what she said typo deska demote demote that's my typo <laughs> all right let's do it again boom running go back do this now we go we don't go to the specific backends anymore we go to our beautiful reverse proxy 8080 obviously a uh, stupid course right uh, cross origin resource sharing doesn't allow you to do that so you, you have to go to the same domain and then do this thing ba -ba -ba -da -ba. i'm gonna share the code for you guys i already shared it. it's the server sent event but I'll, I'll leave it in the comment section below and uh, copy so server three let's hit it again we got server one and uh, the moment you try you keep trying you can get another server so this is the load balancing aspect of this all right server three server two server one server one that was a quick video guys to explain how to do load balancing on server sent just because guys when you make a request that request goes to one server and you're locked you're going to be receiving the response from that same server as long as you're connected to it once you close that response and you establish a new one then you'll be load balanced to another server hope that helps i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye